Hi, hello, how are you? I'm terrific, how are you? Yeah, really good, thanks. I've literally just finished your film about 15 minutes ago, so. <laughs> wow, we're coming, wow, 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 how do you feel? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty intense, isn't it? It's a, it's a, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of an Not adventure. Not the easiest of rides. No, <laughs> um, but no, I, I, I really enjoyed it. I mean, I was gonna, I might as well jog. I haven't got too long today, so I'll get started. But what was it about this, this role and this, this movie that really attracted, attracted you? Well, you know, I'm an actress who uh, always starts with story. <laughs> That's what we're going for. Um, and if I can, if I want to turn the page when I'm reading it and I'm riveted, then I'm like, oh, good. Then I know what the audience is going to do if I could just find a way to craft his interesting uh, performance. And uh, I thought this was, I mean, the you know, thriller genre. Um, but what I found interesting about how Peter wrote it was that every single turn, is equally as disturbing as the one before, and you're completely baffled by how you thought you knew something, and then you meet somebody else, and you meet another character, and then, like, oh, I didn't, wait, hold on. Reese, this person? And um, that's how I began to understand that this movie really is about perspective. Because you meet Wendy and Paul, and you think something, when you get to the end of the movie, and you look back, and have a different perspective, it's a completely different movie. So to play those two things, I found to be fascinating, fascinating. Because you can't just do, you, you know, it's really perfect, wonderful, but what was unique about it was that uh, it really became a movie about how we see things, how we look at things, how we ignore things that we know are true, how we don't see what we know, how we don't listen to what we hear. and uh, And then, if we do, it can be a shocking experience. I think that's pretty human. Yeah. yeah. Could you remember when you first read it then? Did you, did you go on that similar experience that I just went on? Were you kind of gasping every time you turned the page? I was. Yeah. I mean, but I do, I don't, when I get a script, I, I ask to have no information about it because I want to go in uh, as, a, as a viewer, as an audience member. And I just couldn't believe it. It's not, uh, it's a very unique thing that Peter did. Um, I've been doing this uh, uh, quite a while. <laughs> I won't tell you how many decades. <laughs> but to um, be uh, given the privilege of uh, being participating in, in something that is truly uh, un, uh, unexpected and riveting is as fun for me as it is with the audience. And then that becomes the game, that becomes the play. And then and, and, uh, creating that intimacy with Thomas and really and structuring that with uh, Peter to be able to literally be doing two movies, two stories at the same time is really fun. Yeah. And how was it putting yourself into that mindset every day? Was it quite almost exhausting? Because it's such an emotionally charged performance that by the end of the shoot, did you, was it almost like a kind of weight had been lifted when it was over to be able just to, to kind oh of think for yourself again? <laughs> oh, 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 no kidding. Yes. And I think, I mean, it's not like, oh, what a burden. Like, that's my pleasure. I, I'm, oh, I'm so, I mean, I'm so flattered when uh, people like, allow me to tell such uh, intense stories through the characters I play. But it, it really is when you're doing something like this, you just don't want to do the same scene over and over, which is the trap of this. You know, you're like, oh, she's a nut. And, oh, every single scene becomes um, crazier and crazier and crazier. <laughs> and um, uh, what I do, I mean, I don't like actors who talk about acting, but I'll tell you this. I try to create a pool of consciousness. You don't have to be a parent to understand this movie and what it would feel like to lose a child. What I want to do is go into that pool of what it means to have felt loss that is inexplicable. Maybe you hid it in pockets. Maybe you didn't even know it was there. And then it starts to lift out of a parent losing their child and, and uh, deep, it deepens it into what, 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 uh, uh, what we all connect on. And um, that's, 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 that intrigues me to be able to play characters that, that allow me to, to show that. Yeah, I always I have that. Yeah, because I mean, that, 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 what's so important to this, and I guess is that you just need to have that trust in your co-star, because what you two, what the characters have to go to, go through together is so intense and, and so specific to their situation. And I, I gather you obviously, you've worked with, with Thomas before, that must have been so helpful to, to both of you that you had that pre-established relationship. 
Well, certainly the work that we did on uh, Hong was the, the, the uh, kind of spark to this, uh, to us being able to think that we could pull this off. Um, and I said, on Hong, Thomas never did anything but run at me. I'm like, ah, ah. And then, and then say one run lines. And this was, uh, this was because we were crafting um, two stories at the same time. It took more commitment than I think either one of us had ever had before, which that challenge of course is uh, thrilling, but took more uh, work. We never, ever, ever stopped working. We would get on, we got on set at night, we got off and then we'd look at the next work for the next day because when you're seeing a line that has two meanings, depending on how you're looking at it, that that that's kind of the fun of having done this for so long and Thomas too, like, we can really pull this off. Let's do it. And that takes craft and that's a, you know, that's a privilege. They didn't want to hire me. They wanted to hire, oh, of course, a younger, prettier, a bigger titted co-star. And, and Thomas, uh, I feel very flattered by this too. He said, you can't pull this thing off if uh, if you don't have any H. They told me that three weeks into shooting wow. that uh, <laughs> he had said that to Peter, but they held that new secret back from me. And I, am I right thinking you guys have got another project lined up? Is that right, that you're working on? Well, I, I mean, there's a lot of, uh, everybody is trying to um, survive, again, this global uh, crisis. Uh, anyway, they can, and uh, for uh, me, of course, I'm always looking at how do you, how do you keep the love going? It's part of what what, what, what is a, a theme of our movie. How can love survive such a such an enormous uh, crisis? And so Thomas and I, uh, I don't know, we were literally just got together and then moved into a house with children. We thought we were going to be like newlyweds. Oh, what fun. We're dating. Oh my gosh, we're 50. Yay. We just fell in love. All, all of a sudden we've got two teenagers, an 11 year old. We're like, what just happened? I didn't want you to be a stepdad. Oh my God. I'm coming out of my bedroom and his 17 year old is sitting. I completely forget she's there. I come out. I'm naked. I'm coming to get a cup of coffee and there's a 17 year old there. So no. So uh, what Thomas and I decided to do was make a little, uh, uh, little uh, sex comedy, which we just finished and um, uh, we're very excited about, uh, about how hopefully um, we maybe gave a little bit of a uh, comic um, perspective on uh, what's going on with couples and humans going through this uh, pandemic. Yeah. It's probably a good thing you guys shot that before the social distancing measures came into place. I'm not quite sure how they're going to do kind of couple rela and relationship dramas well, after this. The thing is, we started it not in the pandemic, but knew what we wanted to do and how we wanted to craft it in the house. And then we were like, well, I mean, whoa, not only were we doing that as an experiment, <laughs> then it became the only way to uh, work. It did it truly, it kept us. Uh, it kept us sane. I don't know what we would have done. We're both very uh, creative people and without uh, something to focus on, I, I, we would have been chasing each other around with knives. Yeah, have you, because I, I wrote a little list at the beginning of lockdown that said I was going to learn piano, I was going to learn French. I've done, yeah. neither, I've, done you? Neither, I've done neither of those things. None. Yeah, no, you haven't written your book? Not yet, I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> About to get there. Yeah. You know, I know, like, I think we all would be like, oh, I used to think, oh my goodness, great. I would all day long, I do things that I pretend are important. And now the laundry, I'm like, yeah, laundry, I kick it down the steps. I go downstairs, refold the towels. Like, who's going to notice? I mean, things are just, I'm getting bad at even thinking that I'm doing anything interesting. Yeah. I was thinking about uh, when you're talking about sort of films that made with social distancing measures, one that definitely could have been made, couldn't be made now with, the, with, with ha people having to keep a distance from each other is Catfight. <laughs> and I was thinking, oh. that I loved that movie. I'm just wondering about, you know, do, you still, do you still speak to Sandra often and stuff? And do, are you a fan of Killing Eve like we all are over here? What are we, I'm a fan of all of them. I mean, you, give, you, you do that. <laughs> Again. That is a partnership. Cat Bite was a partnership. And we went in down and dirty. Sandra, I, uh, I believe she's a, she's a queen to me. And to be able to um, work with her 
uh, it's interesting that you brought it out because it is a similar thing when you get that kind of movie and it's a, uh, uh, sorry, um, it's a similar thing. You got to go in with a partner or it will not work. And she and I, by the way, did that movie for no money. We believed in it so much. We were so thrilled to work with each other. And that, you know, that, that, uh, that just is, uh, you know, it's a blast. Come on, we're, we do a tire fight. Oh, hello. But um, one of the greatest gifts of my life is being able to work with her. Yeah, it's a great film. But I was wondering too, I've always loved your kind of career choice. You mentioned before at the beginning uh, of this interview that what attracted you to The Vanished was obviously the story. Is that all, when it comes to your, when it comes to picking projects and picking characters, is that always what drives you? Is it always the story or, or is it sometimes the director or relationships you might have with people that you've worked with before? Or, or is it, or are you so, are you really driven by the characters that you will be embodying? Is now I always start with a uh, story, and I'm probably uh, it's probably not uh, where most actresses start, <laughs> Sandra. <laughs> um, yeah, because if the story is compelling, I serve a story. You know, you're not an actor cannot act alone. Although a lot of actors think they can, but it's not about you, babe. <laughs> Which I always say to actors, like, oh, oh, that was a bad take. I'm like, I'm sorry. This isn't about you. Oh, wow, what are my dailies going to be? What is am I going to look at? Uh, I'm sorry, this isn't about you. This is about serving the story, serving this, especially with younger actors. This is about, so stop, you get, you get move out of yourself and look at what we're serving. You, you serve the story, baby. I'm sorry if your hair doesn't look good, but that is not what this is. Uh, that's not what it's about. And it's, uh, I'm lucky to be able to do such interesting stories and work with such interesting writers and directors. And of course, it doesn't hurt when you get a call that says, well, Thomas Jane is doing this and you haven't worked with him for seven years and you know you're going to dive into something that is the most complicated to date, the most complicated uh, character I've ever played as I was playing two, two, two stories at the same time. That was fun. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I, mean, I was wondering about how you've always sort of navigated your way around the kind of Hollywood landscape and stuff. Because obviously having some bring that sort of huge success and certain big projects, you know, especially in the 90s and stuff. But you've always managed to keep very kind of grounded. What's your kind of, how have you managed to kind of navigate your way around Hollywood? Because it can be so difficult for young actresses, particularly when they get such big fame at the start of their career. Uh, you know, very early on in my life, I um, made some choices. And um, because of the difficulties that I went through as a kid, I uh, looked at them and understood that I, I felt like maybe things would have gone different if people around me told the truth. <laughs> and that starts there. And you get to Hollywood, you become the this girl, that girl. I had no idea what the heck girl I was. I just knew I was the white trash Gwyneth Paltrow, according to a uh, to conversation I heard my agents have behind my back that they didn't know I was listening to. But there are always choices that we have. There are always things put in front of us. always a carrot. And I had a big carrot. Oh my God, oh look, look how shiny it can be. Like, oh my gosh, you're gonna be blah, 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 blah. That's a big choice to make, to say I serve the truth. And uh, each of one of the challenges that I've had in my life is to look at what I serve and, and be able to remember that it, the carrot's gonna look really good. But it's not, really what I find to be the, the most uh, joyous. And, uh, and those, those choices that I made were, um, you know, perhaps confusing to people. But if you ask me how I navigate Hollywood, because I serve the truth. And whatever comes my way, I feel very blessed and very honored to be able to say I have had a very few um, people around me who, regardless of anything else that goes on, no matter what the carrot is or how uh, how shiny it is, I uh, have supported uh, that decision. And that's why I, I uh, the blessing of um, being in a life that's filled with joy. So my, my final question really was just looking back across your career and stuff. Is there, is there still a particular role or project that you most often get stopped for or recognized for when you're kind of down, walking down the street? Yes, another world. I started on soap opera when I was 17. I moved the day after I graduated from high school and I played twins. Vicky and Marley Love, funny that I serve love, but, but Vicky and Marley Love, and I played them for four years. I played uh, Twins, was well, honored to be able to uh, win an Emmy for it. Um, nobody could believe that I wasn't two people, and that was, was certainly a compliment. But the hilarity of what soap operas used to do is they would bring you into, uh, you know, your home, and well, of course, it would be the background music uh, to many, 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 many people who uh, were, uh, uh, if not watching, listening, 
And um, that's probably the, the biggest pool of uh, people that I reached. Um, and I mean, I, I, I recognize that more than uh, anything. Six, eight, seven nights people like to do with Harrison Ford. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, in some ways, was this project quite similar to that? Because that was playing two characters and this was playing kind of two stories. Was there a kind of similarity between the two projects in some ways? Well, so Barbara, you know, I've never been for, uh, like formally trained, whatever, formally trained. That means I didn't go to school, but I got schooled. I was on, you know, I did 60 pages of dialogue a day for four years. Half one character and half another. It was, uh, that's, that's good schooling. Um, uh, and I, I, I learned a lot about playing with how you can ride a, a line. Uh, it was, it, it, it trained, everything trains, you know, everything, you know, uh, trains uh, us. Of course, we don't wake up fascinating. We got to learn stuff <laughs> to be able to give stuff. And by the way, I think I just recorded um, something for the BBC radio. Oh, cool. I, I love Lucy series. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, cool. I think it's coming, I think it's coming to radios uh, soon. Oh, nice. Well, when, when did you do that? I did it, I think I recorded it uh, maybe within the last couple of weeks. Oh, nice. I'll be looking at it. Oh, are you kidding? I love Lucy. Are you kidding? So <laughs> to be able to just speak in uh, her rhythm was uh, a blast. It blast. must be amazing that you're still kind of ticking boxes, even, you know, after being, having been in the industry for a while. There's still all these great. Oh, no, no. oh it never stops. Um, yeah. I, mean, oh, I mean, when my kids say, oh, I'm bored, I'm like, really? I've never experienced that. Go fascinate yourself and get out of here. Use your imagination and go have fun. Uh, bored, no, I'm fascinated by things that come my way. And I, uh, oh, wow, I get to do that today? Okay. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. I can't wait to hear it. I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah. It's super fun. It's super fun. Right, brilliant. Well, thank you so much for the time today, Anne. It's been a real pleasure speaking to you. And good luck you with the movie too. and stuff. And I hope it's, 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 it's obviously quite a strange time for things to be released. But hopefully, you know, in the future one day, we might be able to do an interview like this in person again. Who knows? Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers crossed. All right, well, thank you so much for today. Much I love you. Have a great day. Thank Take care, so Anne. Bye-bye. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey!